Hi kiddos, this is your third set of Sky and Scale Notes, The Celestial Sphere. So just as a reminder, uh, we had this concept of a celestial sphere from the old notion of a geocentric universe that put Earth and Earthlings at the center. The universe, which at the time was just the sun, moon, Earth, and all of our visible planets in orbit around us. The sphere, because sphere was thought to be the most heavenly perfect body, and we had all of the stars then attached to that sphere. So it appeared from our perspective and from Earthling's perspective as if all of the heavens and the stars attached to the heavens rotated around us. And we know that is no longer the case, but it helps to give us positions and coordinate systems by thinking of the heavens and all of the sky as being attached to the sphere that goes around us. So we have these different locations within the celestial sphere. We have our zenith, which is located directly above us, not to be confused with our NCP, or our north celestial pole. We then have our horizon, which is located 180 degrees from one side to the other, would be starting at zero degrees. Zenith would be exactly at 90 degrees from our horizon, so perpendicular. Then we have our NCP, or our north celestial pole, and our, S, our SCP, which would be our South Celestial Pole. So we could never view that from the northern horizon, but we would see our NCP as being the star located directly above magnetic north. So our celestial equator is the celestial projection of the equator upon the celestial sphere, and this would perfectly intersect the north-south axis. So if we were to draw a line from our north and south celestial poles, which are right above magnetic north and south, we can see that our celestial equator perfectly intersects that. So they're always going to be exactly 90 degrees from each other. We then also have the meridian, which perfectly intersects zenith to NCP to north to nadir, which is directly below our zenith to SCP and back again. So zenith directly above, nadir directly below, our NCP located magnetically directly above our north pole, and our SCP above our south pole. So then again, the celestial the equator is the projection of our equator upon the celestial sphere, and that is exactly perpendicular and intersects the north-south axis, or the meridian. So again, our meridian perfectly slices the sky in half. If we were to look due south, we would see the meridian is separating the sky into east and west because it goes from our zenith directly through our poles, so the meridian slices it. And again, this is not something we can see, but it just helps us give positions to coordinate systems on the sky. And our zenith, which is located directly above us, is not the same as our NCP or our pole stars. So in this case, your north and south are on directly the horizon. So that would mean the pole star would also be on the horizon. So this observer could never see the pole star, which means this observer must be located at the equator. In order for your zenith and the pole star to be exactly the same, the observer would have to be located directly at the north pole. So remember, zenith is always directly above. Zenith changes depending on your positionality on the globe, whereas your pole star is always the same. It's just where we see it that changes depending on your location. So we can see if we look at this example of here being our observer, there being the zenith. Remember, zenith is always directly overhead. Nader would be this arbitrary point down below where you could never see. We could see that in this instance, our observer's horizon, which would be right here, is located at the same location as our NCP and our SCP. So remember that the zenith angle is 90, our horizon angle is zero, but in this case, the North Celestial Pole intersects that horizon angle. So that means that this observer, in order to have the same location at both the horizon and the NCP, that means that the location of this observer has to be at the equator. Because notice that this observer could never see either celestial pole, and the only place where that is possible is the equator. So that would mean that if the NCP, the North Celestial Pole, were right here, that would mean that north for this observer would have to be right here, Remember this circle being the horizon, which would mean south would be exactly opposite, which would mean east would be here, which would mean west would be here. And that makes sense because we can see that our meridian 
perfectly intersects north and south, which would mean, remember, perpendicular to that would be the celestial equator. So the celestial equator would then intersect. So for this observer, the celestial equator would be directly overhead. I drew that a little bit incorrectly. Really, your east-west would be more like this because north is, is right here. So if you were at the equator, the celest or at the equator, the celestial equator would be directly overhead and it would be equivalent with your zenith. And that's only possible at the equator where you could not see either of your celestial poles. So remember that the celestial pole, and I mentioned this before, and the location of latitude of the observer, they're the same angle. So this is how ancient navigators were able to utilize the sky to find their way traversing across the ocean. And this is how settlers landed in the Polynesian islands because those islands are directly above and below the equator. And they knew that that would mean the pole star would be just above the horizon because the latitude of the observer and the location of the pole star are the same angle. Looking at this other example here, we can see that in this case, our observer right here, here is that observer's zenith, which remember is at 90, and remember that zenith is dependent on your location. The north celestial pole or the pole star is always in the same place where we see it is different, but your zenith and the objects at your zenith will change depending on where you are. So for this observer, here would be the horizon circle, or if we were to do it in a line, this would be the observer's horizon. So in this case, here is the NCP. We can see that rotational axis right here. So that would mean that this would be the angle above the horizon of that pole star. So remember that our horizon is zero degrees. Our zenith is 90 degrees. So the angle, that looks like somewhere between zero and 90. I'd say that's approximately 40, 45 or so. So that would mean that this observer would be located at approximately 40 degrees of latitude. So if this were, again, we've got our north-south axis, which intersects our NCP, which would mean here the celestial equator perfectly intersects that. Because remember, just as the terrestrial equator divides the Earth into north and south, degrees above and below the equator, so too does the celestial equator divide the sphere into north and south. And it has to do that because it intersects east and west. So that would mean that everything above this would be north and everything below this would be south. So then your meridian separates your sky into east and west. So here, your north-south axis, your meridian, would divide your sky into east and west of the meridian. And you can find this for us if we look due south, because we would see everything in our sky, our ecliptic band, all appear south of us. If we were to look to the west, we would be looking right of the meridian. If we were to look to the east, we'd be looking west of the meridian. And here, yet another example. So again, we can see, we always want to identify our zenith. And the best way to do this, whenever you look at an image of a sphere, trying to, to figure out your coordinate systems, your positions, identify first what's directly above the zenith, then identify the NCP. That tells you where this person is. And remember, the only way that these two locations would ever be exactly the same is if that observer was located at the North Pole. So in this case, Here's our horizon, always 180 degrees. Sorry, I apparently cannot draw a straight line. In this case, we have quite a big angle to our NCP. I would say this observer is located something like 70 degrees because that looks like a 70 or so degree angle to our zenith. So again, we have our meridian intersecting zenith, NCP, and then also our SCP. And then you can see here, we have that perfect intersection of celestial equator and meridian. So that would mean if we were putting our coordinate systems, if we were to put our north, south, east, west along this guy, that would mean that our NCP is right here. So our north would have to be just below that on the horizon, which would mean south would be opposite. So remember that we find our NCP by finding where magnetic north is. And our north celestial pole star is the star that is immediately above if you were standing directly on magnetic north, it's the star that's the closest to above that. So in addition to separating our celestial sphere into those positions of zenith, nadir, having our uh, 
systems of celestial equator and of our meridian, we also have coordinate systems which can help us identify where objects on the celestial sphere are located. We have altitude, which is used to identify degrees above horizon, and I've referenced this a bit. So, such as our zenith angle is always 90, our horizon is zero, our altitude is degrees above. So since zenith directly overhead forms that right angle, the highest any star can be in the sky or moon or sun or whatever it is, planet, the highest anything can be is 90. So the highest angle that we can have for zenith would be 90. So our altitude is zero to 90. Our other coordinate system is our azimuth, and azimuth is measured from degrees from north. And because we can look in any direction to make a 360, our azimuth can be anywhere up to 60. So north is given a value of zero since it's measured from north. East would be exactly a right angle from north, so that would be given a value of 90. South would be given a value of 180. West would be given a value of 270. So azimuth measures degrees from north. Altitude measures the angle in the sky. So for this particular star, I would say that's about exactly between 0 and 90. I would say that that star has approximately an altitude of 45 degrees. And because of this, I can see that it is closer to north than anything else. I would say that it has an approximate azimuth of, say, 30 to 40 degrees. So here we can see another example of Earth at the center of a celestial sphere, but now we add in the path of the sun. We can see the ecliptic path here, which is tilted at 23 and a half degrees, the same angle as the Earth is. We can see the position of our solstices, which are exactly opposite in the sky. When we start talking about the procession of time, diurnal motion, and annual motion of the sun, um, we'll see that those are dependent on where we see the sun in the sea of background stars. Um, so here we can see the autumnal equinox, the spring equinox are all dependent on the position of the sun in the sky. So in this case, we've got our NCP directly above. So that means that this is taken from the vantage point of the Earth being straight on perpendicular. So here we have some examples of some different locations on Earth, and I would expect you guys to be able to identify um, if given either the latitude or the NCP angle, being able to identify what that latitude is, and if given the latitude, being able to identify where the NCP is. So taking a look at our first one, So we can see that here we know that the latitude is 90 degrees. It tells us that. So this would be the only example of where our NCP and our zenith would be the same. Because this person, that means that their equator is right there. The equator and their horizon are at the same level. So we could think about this as being their horizon. So in this case, here would be their north, here would be their south, here would be their east, here would be their west and that is the angle to their NCP would be exactly 90, which means they would be located at 90 degrees latitude. Taking a look at the next example, here we can see that our latitude is 30 degrees. So here we can see our observer, we can see that observer's horizon, but we can see that that horizon is offset because we have our north pole, our, our magnetic north located directly under where that NCP is, so, and if we were to draw that angle, so here is their horizon. We can see that there looks to be about, if we draw that angle to our zenith, the angle to our pole star looks to be about exactly a 30 degree angle, which would match the latitude because the latitude of the observer is equivalent to the angle above the horizon or the altitude of the pole star. So here we can see that perfect intersection between the north-south axis and the celestial equator. And here we can see our horizon. We have our north directly under the pole star, which would mean south is here, east is here, west is there. Here we have another example. We looked at this one previously. So this observer is located at zero degrees latitude. I would expect you to know that that would be located at the equator. So you can see that our NCP is now at the horizon level. So we can see where our, uh, our horizon, our coordinate systems are labeled. We can see here the perfect intersection of that celestial equator, which intersects the north-south axis. So in this case, zenith and this, the celestial equator would have the same location. 
And then kind of the trick question here is this guy is at a latitude of negative 30. So in this case, they still see their pole star at 30 degrees above the horizon, but in this case, it's the south celestial pole, so it's still 30 degrees. And just for our intents and purposes, we're going to put everything in the north over to the right and everything to the south to the left. I would not give you a southern hemisphere example on a test, but this is the true, really, assessment of your understanding of this. So again, to reiterate, the altitude of the pole, the degrees above the horizon, to the pole star is equivalent to the latitude of the observer. So here we can see that the observer is located right at the North Pole, right there. So the zenith and the NCP would be the same. Here would be our example at the equator. So we could see that the uh, horizon and the NCP would be the same. And then here would be mid-latitude. So we can see that all of those are dependent on the location of the observer. And the direction of motion that we see of the star trails of the constellations of the apparent motion of the celestial sphere itself is also dependent on which direction we're looking. So if we are to look north, we would see that it appears like all of the stars follow a counterclockwise motion around the pole star. And there are some of the constellations and stars that never rise or set. They are always close to the pole star. And that is dependent on how far above and below the equator you are. At higher latitudes, most of the sky never rises or sets. For us at mid-latitude, about, you know, 75% of the constellations we see, we can only see part of the year. But generally, from anywhere in the northern hemisphere, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and in some places Cassiopeia, would be our circumpolar constellations that are always near to the pole star. And here we can see looking north that we would see everything appear to follow a counterclockwise motion around the pole star. So here showing our circumpolar constellations again, we can see Ursa Minor, Cassiopeia, so our apparent motion of the sphere if we were looking towards Polaris would appear to be moving counterclockwise. And if we were looking south, because the motion of the sky would have the highest point of transit looking due south or at the meridian, because we know that things rise in the east, set in the west, looking south, we would see them crest their highest point across the sky. Um, it would appear if we were looking south that everything would be rising and then falling back down again. So here would be the highest point of transit. Since we know things rise in the east and set in the west, if we looked east, it would appear as though all of the constellations, all of the star trails were going up, which means that if we were to look west, it would appear as though they were going down. So I would also expect you guys to be able to recognize if I were to show you an image such as this where the pole star would be. And we can see that all of these star trails appear to rotate around a center point. So we would recognize that the pole star is directly at the center. We also have some points of reference here. So we can see that this is not super far above the horizon, but definitely not at 90. I would approximate this picture on the right to be somewhere in the mid latitudes. So I would say this is somewhere around 40 degrees. I would say that this one is slightly higher. We can see that it looks slightly higher in the sky, um, but again, it wouldn't be zero, wouldn't be 90. And in this one, you can see some of those circumpolar constellations, which would also be an indication of what latitude the image was taken at. That is it for your celestial sphere notes, guys, and I will see you next class. Please ensure that you have watched this video and you really have an understanding of the coordinate systems, the positions, and how those change dependent on where an observer is on the planet.